Hey, welcome to another day of drawing. Uh, I just wanted to remind you that um, it is absolutely weird and amazing that you get to draw, that we get to draw, and that you should be very, very, very excited to draw today. I mean, really. You have every reason to be. Jesus. God, it's nuts when you think about it. I mean, did you forget? I forget all the time. Think about it. You really, uh, you have a blank piece of paper before you and whatever you draw, whether good or bad, understandable or not understandable, you get to just make a world, whatever, you know, in, in, a, in a very real sense, you are absolutely just mainlining the secret of the universe. You are the font of creativity as long as you don't judge, as long as you turn off that part of your mind, as long as you shut off the part of you that says, oh, well, you know, I'm the font of creativity if it comes out great. It's like, no, 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 forget that. How, whatever you made, however you made it, that's, that's it. That's really it. It's right there. It's right there. The proof is in the pudding. You did it. It is a uh, very, very exciting at any time if you just let it be. Wow, that is great. Oh, good for you. Good for you that you get to uh, sit down today and just uh, make anything real. You can make anything real. And it's up to you, the level of fidelity that you want that reality to reach, but everything's on the table. You can make any kind of topsy-turvy, wacky, lovely, scary, beautiful, nervous, neurotic, strange, sublime, ephemeral, any kind of a thing that you want. It's right there. Hit on, on the other side of that piece of paper or your screen or your canvas, whatever you are making on. And the wildest thing is that while you do it, you get to become that. You get to become that thing. Have you ever, you've probably drawn a head or two in your time as someone who's interested in art. You ever find that while you're drawing a face or a head that you're looking at or you're drawing someone making an expression, you find yourself automatically making that same face and you kind of like catch yourself doing it. And then, uh, you know, inevitably just the way it goes with everything. When you catch yourself, you get self-conscious and then you make yourself stop. But before the stopping, before the catching, the fact that you just, without knowing it, just your subconscious starts making that same face, becoming one with that thing you're trying to create, uh, that's, uh, that's a little uncanny isn't it? Why do we ignore that? That's it. There's good info there. You are actually becoming the thing that you are making. And you know, it seems it's easy, you know, faces and expressions are so relatable that it seems quite easy for our subconscious to grapple with it and then just start running the, you know, muscle movements to copy that exactly. But um, as someone who, you know, likes to spend three hours a day essentially summoning a demon, I can tell you that um, your mind is actually quite capable of becoming more specialized and niche things. You can really, um, you can sort of just lose yourself and become the arcane and the strange and the esoteric. You can become scary, subtle, slippery. You can become indignant. You can become self-righteous. And depending on what kind of person you are when you are not the font of creativity, well, those things can be rather healing. You know, everybody needs different things in their life. Um, isn't, that, isn't that exciting? I mean, you know, we're artists. You know, every artist is different, but we also do tend to share a certain set of personality traits, you know, we tend to be a little neurotic, a little insecure, maybe. I don't know if you've ever met a neurotic or insecure artist, but they're out there. And um, I don't know if, uh, you know, your friends or your family or your therapist would ever advise you to uh, balance out your sort of low self-esteem, wormish self-conception with, um, you know, occasionally spending an hour feeling like you are a tremendous, writhing, bulging, just demonic display of virility and power. But um, 
if you ask me, I can kind of see how that might uh, help you out a little bit. There's There's got to be some kind of medicine there. Um, and the great thing about drawing is that you get to decide what you need. You get to decide what your particular medicine is, and uh, you get to uh, really just become it, really just become it, and you can become such strange things. And at that point, you know, it really starts to, you know, it slides into some of the old things that we've heard. Oh, you know, those silly stories from those long gone civilizations that, oh, they're just stories, no interesting, fun history to read, but you know, just oh, those primitives, you know, they, oh, bless them. They were so, uh, so lacking in cell phones and technology that they needed to come up with this stuff just to stay entertained. It's weird when you pay attention. Some of the, uh, the feelings that you can feel and the connection that you can feel with the whatever that you want to spend your drawing time invoking, those feelings really do start to sound, do start to feel very familiar to things you've heard from the old texts. Hmm. Hmm. Well, something to think about there, but um, we don't have to get into those weeds right now. Let's just settle on remembering that uh, you really should be excited about what you get to do here. You really should be freaking pumped to sit down and hold your pencil and draw whatever and see comes out. See what comes out. It really is a it really is an incredible thing. And it's all up to you. You get to decide. Well, you get to decide if you allow yourself to decide what you're going to make or maybe more accurately what you are going to be open to sort of channeling or allowing to flow through you. You are definitely not going to be deciding if uh, you have allowed your practice to be completely driven by the expectations of others and imagined industries and things that you think art directors or job providers are looking for, you know. There's a time and a place to think about those things and to make concessions to those things. And there's times in your career where that time and place is bigger than the time and place allowed or allotted to the more free form art practice. But while you can, when you can, remember that when those are the guiding principles, when those are the North Star that you wake up and look at every day for your art practice, you are not really choosing. You are always sort of just compulsively reacting to your imagined conceptions of those things. And they are imagined. You don't, you don't know for sure what someone else wants, what anyone is expecting of you, what the industry needs, where it's going to move, what it's going to do, how it's going to dip, how it's going to go up. You just have no idea about that. No one does. Those things are by nature uncertain. So it's up to you what uncertainty you want to play in. You either want to you either want to play in the devilish, deceptive uncertainty of the things that claim to be certain, like jobs and industries and expectations and social media and what your friends and your family think about your work. You're going to play in that uncertainty, or maybe you're going to spend a little time playing in the unstructured uncertainty of gazing close in at that empty space from which your ideas come and really become one with and sort of, for a time, transform into those things and those ideas. And then react to that and say, well, that was an interesting thing to become for four hours or five hours. Let's, uh, let's go that way again tomorrow or maybe just uh, push it a little more sharp or a little more soft or a little less scary or more scary or whatever you want to do. That's why you're addicted to art anyway. And of course you're addicted. I mean, God damn, it's so hard. And it's been so hard and it's so confusing. And geez, you know, you don't, you don't know how things are going to go. Of course you're addicted. Why would you keep coming back to something that is so unsure and so hard to do? Of course, it's got, it's got its claws in you. It's got them in there deep. So look for the fun in there if you're going to be, if you're just going to keep getting dragged back no matter what. 
decide for yourself what you will become. Allow yourself to decide and look for, look for the you in it. Look for the you that's in there. Do you find anything? Do you find a solid you in there? Or is it more like the process and the function of art making? The route that it goes down is always a, a path of transformation, of being one thing and then another, moving, ever shifting, bubbling like a whirl in a stream. That's what I find. I'd be very interested in what you find. Go look for it.